Hello, and a warm welcome from the Bit Country and the Metaverse Network team. We've got another minute or so to go. It's great to see everyone joining in. So we'll give it one more minute and then we'll get started. I love seeing the hugs from all over. <laughs> so hi, hugs yeah. from Mexico. <laughs> Yeah, people from different parts of the world. Yeah, hello from Vietnam, Dubai. <laughs> Turkey. Yeah, Mexico, Toronto. China, Russia, Ukraine, Spain. South Africa. Uh, yeah, Germany. Good oh, talk. Nigeria. <laughs> Argentina, yeah. Oh, it's like a Christmas Eve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it is time. It is time. So I'll kick it off. Um, hello and welcome. A very warm welcome from the BitCountry and Metaverse Network team. We are so glad that you could join us for our demo day as we introduce you to the talent working hard behind the scenes and reveal how they've been working to make your Metaverse dreams a reality. Now, if you're tuning in live, congratulations. Um, you will receive a very special POAP NFT. Um, so you can remember this moment forever and ever. Um, but stay tuned until the end, and I'll share the link for you so you can claim your NFT. Um, now, before we jump in, um, just a few things. Um, if you've got any questions, please uh, post them in the q and I see, ooh, I see we've got a few already. Love it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> so just post your questions over there. <clears throat> and then um, just to give you a quick overview of what we'll cover today, mm. um, we'll start our... Um, our session with um, introducing you to some of our ecosystem partners um, and they'll just give you a greater insight into mm. the role they play in our metaverse development um, and then that'll be followed by Ray our CEO and co-founder and he'll um, share some background stories with you and some of our latest achievements he'll be followed by Justin who will um, just take us into the metaverse machine with his demo um, and that um, he'll be followed by Shannon, our CTO um, of gaming, um, who will show us how you can build in the metaverse without any technical skills whatsoever. Um, and then um, he'll be followed by our co-founder, Daniel, who will show us how the marketplace and subdivision works. So we've got the full team here today. Um, and we'll also um, have our design and development team here who will just show us some of the latest developments on their side. And then finally, we will um, conclude with an AMA. So please stay tuned until the end. But without any further ado, I would love to introduce you to Juanita from Industry Connect. So over to you, Juanita. It's lovely to have you here. Morning, Gadi. Thanks so much for the intro. Can you guys hear me, first of all? All good. So thanks for the invitation um, to be here. It's wonderful. And it's great to be part of Vidal Country and the Metaverse Network. As Gadi said, I'm Juanita. I'm General Manager of Industry Connect Global. Now, Industry Connect is the educational arm of Bit.Country, where we've trained over 3,000 participants in the last eight years. We are here to support the required talent needed for the metaverse and development moving forward. Now we're launching the new the new Metaverse Career Academy um, in early 2022. So we're really looking forward to that. The Metaverse Career Academy will be the initiative um, that will develop the talent to be used. So what I'll do for you all is I'll pop the link um, for the Metaverse Career Academy in the chat box. Please pop over there, have a look at it, register your expression of interest, and we'll get in touch with you as soon as we launch. Back to you, Gadi. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Vanita. Um, Eko, it's lovely to see you. <laughs> um, I would love to, just before I pass you over to Eko, um, I've got some messages um, popping up people asking, what is a POAP NFT? So just in a nutshell, very quickly, um, it just basically um, is, it's like a ticket stub. If you go to an event and you keep a, stick, a ticket stub for, as a memory that you went to that concert or that show, um, a POAP NFT is like that. It's something that you can remember this moment by, 
but on top of that, it also unlocks special utilities in the future. So um, if you're interested, you can go to po, so poap.xyz and find out more on that. So without any further ado, let me pass you over to Echo. Thank you, everyone. It's um, Kira from New Zealand. My name is Echo. Um, it's a, a great privilege to be here today and to meet you all from all over the place. Um, with extensive experience in marketing and being the CEO of Amy Limited, um, I'm the co-founder of a new um, project called Meta Dojo. Uh, what do we deliver in this project? First of all, we build metaverse premises in the form of an NFT ready to be used and to be deployed on any open metaverse land um, and your website if you're not um, quite there yet. And secondly, we give you toolkits to uh, facilitate interior economy to help you to further grow that uh, the value of your digital assets. Um, and on um, to look in, but into a bit closer into our model, and you find um, the creators' economy is a very important part of our of our growth, which lead to our close partnership with uh, Juanita and her team from Industry Connect, uh, which we are long, looking at launching a meta, very first Metaverse Career Academy early, uh, early next year, before we have a formal um, beta launch on the Big Country Metaverse Network. And the reason we choose to partner with Big Country Metaverse Network is because of you guys, because of the strong backing from the community um, and also from all the, um, the, the, the support and, um, and the investors that are backing them. So yeah, we would very much looking forward to provide you with ready to use um, NFT buildings to be deployed on your, on your Metaverse um, land in Big Country and start to have some fun, start to bring value, start to show it off to your friends. Oh, back over to you, Gadi. Good luck to everybody. Thanks so much, Echo. That is so exciting. Um, and, and let's um, pass on to Andy. Hi, Gadi. Thanks very much for having me. Uh, and good morning. Um, so my name is Andy McKelvey. I'm a mentor at MVP Studio. So MVP Studio is an incubator with over 2,000 members. Uh, we work with Industry Connect students after their course to further develop and to help them gain the real life experience um, and the real hands on experience. So members work on real open source projects in real working environments. Uh, members continue their learning experience, but most importantly, while experiencing agile development experiences and processes like stand up meetings and more participation in technical conversations. Uh, we'll be working with BitCountry and Meta, uh, Metaverse Network for all the future ecosystem projects and any developments going into the future. So thanks very much, everyone. Enjoy the demonstration and back over to you, Gardi. Short and powerful. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now we'll um, hand you over to our CEO and co-founder, Ray. Ray, over to you. Uh, thanks, Gardi. Hello, everyone. Guten Tag, Privet, Nihama. Hi, um, I'm Ray. I'm the CEO and the co-founder of uh, Big Country and the Metaverse Network. Today, I'd like to open the session with my presentation to talk about our background, our business model, and also our ecosystem partners. Uh, most importantly, I'll introduce, uh, give you an overview how to make money through our system. Uh, we create a very interesting and powerful new value capture system uh, I'd like to introduce to you. And followed uh, by Justin's presentation and Shannon's and Daniel's and other developers, uh, you will see that how those things can be realized in the application or through our protocols. Yes, again, thanks for attending live. Uh, we will have the NFT job after this, uh, you know, we'll fill up the form to prove you attended, and then you will receive a code to claim the NFT from poap.xyz, uh, yeah. Uh, great. Um, let me dive into it. How's the quality over the other side? Uh, Gardy, do you see the voice? Is everything fine? Yeah, you perfectly. Okay. Thanks, Ray. Excellent. Yeah, 2021 onward. Now you realize that you be educated by the big organizations like Meta.com, what the Metaverse is about. So we see a trend that individuals, organizations are heading to Metaverses. 
And we actually started in January 22nd, 2018. Uh, that was the time that I registered a dog country domain name when I was attending China US blockchain conferences in San Francisco. Uh, I thought something that was missing in the space, you know, Bitcoin and decentralized technology give us a sense of perpetuity. I thought it would be nice to build life in that, you know, space. And then, you know, cryptos was not used on a daily basis with only being a store of value. I want to see that, you know, uh, you know, cryptos and NFTs is part of our life. There we go. The first idea, Big Country was born. And later we've been modeling and remodeling. Uh, we don't want to create a visual presentation of 3D world. We want to build more to it. To share our understanding of the world, origin, future, and the people. As you know, uh, most people know we build a big country. We actually have two product lines. We have two CTOs led by Justin and Shannon. Uh, the app is a big country and the metaverse network is actually the blockchain protocols. Uh, in a nutshell, we are a platform the ecosystem for user created metaverse and games. Uh, we were backed by early uh, you know, uh, investors Hyperso Venture leading the Pokto investment and Mocha brands, Unicorn in the uh, metaverse space. Uh, Dub Venture, they have an influencer network like Mr. Beast, Lachlan, uh, uh, KSI, uh, reaching about 200 million followers. And also they are very interested, or some of them already purchased our land blocks, be your neighbors. Uh, we are part of the Pokdot ecosystem, supported by Web3 Foundation Ground. We also accepted as the member by uh, Berkeley Blockchain Accelerator, uh, part of the 2021 cohort. We also accepted by the CDL by Toronto University. And just last week, I was invited by the Y Combinator for interview because they noticed uh, a big country metaverse network. So it's very interesting to be part of them. Yeah, so big country itself, we envisage a future that modern social groups on Discord, Twitter, even TikTok, will need to have a perpetual world for their community members. In there, you have NFTs, you have your own map of land blocks, you have a global map and pick your neighbors. You have a you know, timeline feed, which is broadcasting the events and the moments inside your metaverse. Of course, you have a 3D world that you can build our goal is not just like a 3D world to walk around and see uh, items. You're entering the world for a mission and the Shannon will explain more about it. I know, you know, in the metaverse, it's not just about the, you know, games, the visual. Our understanding of metaverse is about those new native experience that uh, doesn't exist in the games or in the real world. So in there, you will see governance. That's where you can use your power to influence the future of a metaverse network and big country or your local metaverse. In there, you have economies. People can get a new career that never exists in our human history. In there, you will see new relationship such as the metal soul concepts that you can expand your consciousness or freedom to a whole new level in the eternal space. Yes, so this is the overview of our architecture. At the bottom, as a blockchain protocol built by Justin's team, uh, it's literally just called the Metaverse Network. We are so fortunate to secure this domain name earlier, you know, because we had a vision a lot earlier than other people. A big country is the application that you will love because you browse it, you'll be able to use it. You can load the world up within two seconds. You can interact with other people just as a the traditional social media. However, it's decentralized that will exist now onward as long as the Bitcoin lasts. Yes, so launch your individualized metaverse for you, your families, your girlfriends, your boyfriends, partners, or the entire community at the big country. No technology, you know, technical skills required, ever can build. You know, that's where Shannon can show you how powerful that would be. If you are an organization, uh, uh, project builders, you have a team, you have a much bigger vision, have a new interesting narrative, you can come to Metaverse Network to launch your project while benefiting our 
mass amount of user wallets. And also, we uh, have a grants available, either as a token or land grant, allow you to also build an impact country to demonstrate your product you know, to the wider audience. This is our ecosystem. We have over 100 established committed partnership. Uh, on the left-hand side, this is our fully operated owned partnership. There is a Metaverse Foundation. We issue grants, big country as already explained. We have a Metaverse Career Academy, which is uh, supported by Singapore government. So students in Singapore can join this academy without any cost. Uh, and Imoka Brains and Berkeley Blockchain uh, uh, Accelerator, also a backer of this academy. Uh, as a we're Andy farm, we have 2,000 developers and members inside our incubator. That's where all our startups uh, being uh, launched inside the incubator, along with the industry connect trained talents. So in our group, we have about uh, over, uh, I mean, four established startups have their own CEOs, manager team, with a total employee about 60 people. Uh, some of you guys probably know that we also run a sc uh, school for Polkadot for a little while. We train about over 400 software developers currently serving the Polkadot ecosystem. And a parity and big country and our college team, we can combine, uh, combine together, uh, collaborate to put this uh, academy. And also we issue the certificate with the Polkadot and the parity logo. On the right hand side, we have uh, many ecosystem partners. Uh, we announced quite a few during our Paralo. There are a lot more exciting news to be announced in the future. So here's a nutshell. Uh, I know, you know, bringing a brand and budget to the family is very important. So we create a, a very sophisticated uh, economy that have a supply and demand uh, balanced. So you're holding a new token or near token on Kusama Pioneer Network, you're literally guaranteed you have a career in our ecosystem. So how would it look like? Um, you know, as you know, uh, we are making an announcement about our land distribution before Christmas. It's not that we want to put it on hold. Decision has been made, formula has been written. The good news is that we will distribute. We want to make every portfolio contributors to have a chance to realize their dream, have the opportunity as much as we can. Okay, we use Christmas to honor your efforts and also want to bring some good news wrapped in the gift uh, during the season and also honor this most uh, important uh, festival uh, all over the world. So in there, you can launch your new metaverse. You either decide to subdivide your land you know, sell it or give to someone special who deserves space in your heart, or you can stake your new to earn BIT. Uh, you can mint NFTs, you have a large community because the people who want your collections, NFT have the different functions there, or you just build it up, you know, develop your city, develop your own decentralized land, or develop like, your own perpetual world, you know, for you, uh, with your own sky, uh, with your own, you know, material economy and governments. Or someone else had a bigger metaverse, you know, for example, me, I probably have 1 million followers at some point and my land will be sought after. So it's good for you to secure early people uh, become my neighbor and those land mining power will be huge. You can also invest in there and stake to the land units that you purchased or being gifted from me in my world. Grow to earn. Yes, that's the same to play to earn, how I will call it grow. We want to build a protocols and a culture that you understand the importance of you know, grow and mature, and then have the right uh, attitude and the mindset for life and have a sense of purpose. So we're creating interesting protocols allow you to educate yourself or by the community to complete meaningful tasks to build the other people's community or yours to have a chance to earn uh, monetary incentives. Or, of course, life needs a bit of fun. You can join the games. Some game pool have reward uh, incentive. And if you become the top 10 or top number one, uh, most likely you get a big reward. Uh, we have a little bit of DeFi component there, although we work with the partners. However, we have two currency, which is bit is in-game currency consumed on a daily basis as a material or energy source. So there will be a peer between uh, a Noom and a bit 
So there will be chance for a liquidity provider to provide liquidity to earn an income either in BIT or near or new. Or service provider. Can you imagine how many opportunities out there? You have a real estate agencies to introduce the land value, introduce the background, the mining power, how you strategize them. You have a 3D artist, you have ecosystem partner like a metadojo.io. You have a uh, you know, career development uh, uh, um, a consultant coming to show you to train you how to make the most out of the through your assets. So uh, we see that your metaverse will become the new home for your assets, for your story, for your you know, community. We like to see a new trend or creating a new trend ourselves to see metaverse will become the mainstream uh, concept or uh, platform for people's future living. This is our team. Uh, this is an old photo. We have a lot more now, and on a daily basis, we're adding a little bit more. You see, we have a diversity of a culture, and also we have uh, people from different parts of the world. So yeah, we'll uh, continue to let them to uh, present in the future demo days, get to know you. You can get to know their background, understand our principles and the culture and understanding of metaverse. So thanks everyone. I think most of you guys already participated in our crowd long. Uh, today, I would like to give you a head up of our upcoming event with the Polkadot. Uh, yes, so uh, we are participating in the crowd long in February. Uh, we try to secure or will secure a slot. And uh, hopefully that will be a similar result to Busama because we broke the historical record uh, by the total number of participation uh, contributors. Uh, at the time, we'll lock away 100 million um, um, KSM in total. And uh, we created some movement uh, in the KSM price during the auction time, which was really interesting to see. Uh, we work it out almost everybody paid a dollar using their staking reward for each near token. So thanks everyone again, I really appreciate it. And uh, sometimes uh, you just need to uh, conclude a concept not so quickly, you see the results and our announcement before the Christmas. And uh, again, we want to honor the community and to look after you. Yeah, so our culture is more like a, a journey together uh, through my co-founding teams, all my startups, or the CEOs, co-founder were my former students many, many years ago. I handpicked them from thousand people. What I promise the future to Justin, Shannon, Daniel, uh, Echo, Kai, Juanita, everyone else is that, you know, from the relationship starts, you, you are students, now you're my top employees. The next steps, you'll become co-founder and the CEOs. And so far my promise is fulfilled, right? <laughs> and the next step is I said, if you don't want to be a CEO, you wouldn't work with me for a long time because I need the leaders I want you to be the CEO. I will be your backers one day. I'll continue to push every single one of us to do a startup in the future in our ecosystem. And uh, so far, I think I fulfilled 75% of my promises. Again, for the near holders or new holders, I will treat you same as my co-founder team or employees because we knew each other when we were nobody. We knew each other before we even we met. You will decide to contribute and I believe in our vision, and I truly appreciate you as a visionary as well. Thank you. This is my presentation. Back to Gary. Thank you so much, Ray. That's so inspiring. Um, and I know that I've seen um, so many questions pop in there, but I'm going to hand um, us over to Justin, our CTO of Blockchain, and he's going to tell us a bit more about the Metaverse machine. So stay tuned for that. Over to you, Justin. Awesome. All right. So thank you, Gaddy. Um, hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, good afternoon. Good evening um, from all the people around the world. Yeah. Um, as Gaddy mentions, my name is Justin Pham and I'm the CTO um, um, on the blockchain to expect. So leading the whole um, blockchain development team to develop the metaverse, um, you know, we call it a metaverse machine. 
Um, so yeah, I think a little bit about my background is um, yeah, I've been working as the solution architect, um, senior dev, and you know being the CTO for in the last you know uh, more than ten years. So um, yeah, well, I fell in love with the blockchain technologies is how it's amazing it is to create perpetual machine um, that we can store value, um, that we can transfer um, without any like um, the middleman. So yeah, I think since 2017 I start working on the blockchain um, and. And, you know, since that, you know, we've been um, working a lot on the different um, aspects. So, um, yeah, so a little bit about on the blockchain aspects, I already cre um, I, you know, I create like a Solidity course that helped people to understand more on the Solidity, how they can build a DApp, um, you know, on Ethereum. Um, and it is very recent I participate in the Substrate um, Dev Academy, which is like the world um, first, you know, like the Pari technology is doors, um, bucket dots, the, um, you know, we, we introduce about substrates and stuff like that. So, yeah, we have been training um, sort of a few hundred students um, around the world um, in terms of, um, you know, explaining the substrates and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's a little bit about myself. Um, so, I think in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to show you um, what we building, um, the, the metaverse machine behind the scenes that is back, you know, for the big countries and what our vision um, and we can show you um, the demo of what is the working products, um, what you can do um, as the individual user, the metaverse ecosystems and, and stuff inside the um, inside a metaverse machine. All right. So let me just quickly share you the screens. Um, so goes um okay i think so i got everything here cool uh i hope everyone see my screen oh good okay so yeah let me just quickly share that so does everyone see the slides is this popping up is all full screen all right so let's just make it full screen so that should be easier Awesome. All right. So Metaverse Network. All right. So um, I think if you, if you really see this slide um, from Ray talk, um, it's a little bit more about like the, the high overview of what is the BitCountry Metaverse platform. So at the bottom layer is the blockchain protocol we call Metaverse Network, which is that the, um, the backbone of entire networks that we can store the value um, on top of that is we got a lot of bit country applications, um, the frameworks and UI, um, which is that um, later on we can show that into um, Shannon Christie, the co-founders and CTO on the metaverse. We can show you more in detail of what is Intel, um, what it's look like. All right. So um, as the ecosystems that can either participate directly into um, the metaverse network, I will show you that how you can interact with that. Um, as, as we already mentioned, there's going to be some grants and some support there um, if you want to, to build your ecosystem projects on the metaverse. All right. So um, I'm going to start with our vision for the beginnings about the Stru Metaverse, all right? So the Stru Metaverse is backed by a decentralized protocol. Right? So being fully decentralized means your assets, your creativity, your world, your memory are going to be per perpetualized, all right? So it's going to stay as long as the blockchain exists and how long the blockchain is exist. So it's as long as there's a node running on the computer that's connecting the P2P network, it's going to be the lie, all right? So... Yeah, so by saying the backbone of the, the country is this the metaverse blockchain. So um, in the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you um, it's not only the backbone of the bit country, it's also the backbone of your assets, of your world and your creativity. Whatever you're creating um, on the bit country is going to be perpetualized there. All right. So in a nutshell, um, so that's a slide like multi metaverse protocol. All right. So it's designed and built um, you know, to serve the multi metaverses mission all right so it's not designed to allow people to buy and trade um you know bit country assets um in a single metaverse but it's also designed to for your own metaverse for your own asset for your own creativity for your own um, economy rules all right so um let me talk just a little bit more about the metaverse network um you know like some expects here so um First of all, is is powered by substrate. So that's is the technology designed by um, Pari Technology and is using on Bokodot and Kusama. So um, 
the very first expect is unstoppable, as already mentioned. When it's blockchain, it's live. It's nobody can stop it. Um, it's upgradable. So whenever you know, if if the blockchain um, in the past, you know, if you want to roll out some new features, we need to hard fork. We need to update um, the entire ecosystem to make sure that everyone is using the latest fork um, version. So you know, with the with the technologies on the substrate that we build, um, is to become upgradable. Whenever we want to roll out the new features, it's just, um, you know, we just want to run the upgrade as long as the whole governance, the whole community agree with the new features gonna add more value into the um, the network, all right? So it's low fee. So to create like more sustainable um, networks and prevent like the DDoS, um, you know, we just try to um, apply to very low cost of fee. Um, so the transaction fee is going to be a very fractional cost. Um, it's not going to be um, cost a hundred of dollars um, for the single transaction. All right. Um, Multi-chain, so um, it's not limited on the metaverse network. So whatever the asset that you created is can be interoperability um, across all the different network, different parachain. So if you already got your Ethereum um, NFT, Ethereum asset, you can bring that over into the metaverse and then you can enjoy the low fee, um, you know, like the, the blockchains that you can um, visualize your assets and everything inside your metaverse. All right, so the EVM and WASM is that, the um you know like the, the um, premium language that we support and we can execute on side metaverse network so by saying that is any existing d apps um if you already build on ethereum you can bring that over to um sorry, you can bring that over to um you know bit countries and metaverse network all right so the governance is also the um, a part of our metaverse network. So the governance is the um, you know the features that we allow every single community members have a say inside our metaverse network. All right. So what can you do with metaverse network? So in a nutshell, there's a lot of number of key features that we want to um, you know implement. And um, the first of all, you can mint NFT. Um, you can um, you know, like mint on a batch NFT. It's not limited into every single mint. You mint only one NFT, but you can mint thousand NFT at a time. You can transfer not only to one person, but you can transfer the batch worth the hundred or two hundred people at a time. All right. So that's is how scalable it is. Um, our blockchain team, we you know, we continue to improve the scalability of our network so that we can transfer thousands of people in a single transaction. All right. Um, and a marketplace social tokens is everyone that can create their own sort of tokens for your own metaverse as long as you get approved from the governance and the council all right um land estate um continuums is also um is, is the map the good neighborhood protocol that's we design to control the crate um only the crate neighbor can be um, located on a continuum map so just make sure you can be surrounded with the great number of people all right um, as I already mentioned, we, you know, we support the apps. So um, if you build um, the D apps or the games on existence um, Ethereum's or um, you know if you want to use in Wasm, um, which is that um, going to be like Ethereum Wasm is going to be introduced on the Ethereum 2.0, um, you can bring that over into Metaverse or you can just um, you know transfer through the bridge. Um, so that's as you can make your game is ready. Um, you have to run on the Metaverse network. All right. Staking um, and mining is also um, the key features that we created on the Metaverse network. So later on, I can show you what does it look like um, inside the Metaverse network, all right? Um, and if you're on, okay? So um, as I mentioned before, because it's upgradable, if you have any great idea that you want to implement that into the Metaverse network, and there's the community-driven Metaverse network, you can just simply um, create a proposal can um, you know make the crate updates as long as you can see the crate value you're gonna add into the network. All right. So to conclude, what you can do is you can create your own NFT, you can build your own metaverse, and you can set your own economic rule. All right. So this is what metaverse network will help you to do that. Um, so it's a little bit of figures of what happening um, you know, on the Metaverse network. So we launched our testnet five months ago. Um, so more than 5 million blocks has been produced. Um, so around 600,000 is balance transfer through um, our faucet. Um, and we have you know, more than around like 1,800 nodes is waiting to become our active metadata. Um, 
you know, roughly about like 30,000 um, transactions through the Plybox campaign that we just run um, a couple of months ago. All right. So um, let's do a little bit about our roadmap. Um, as we already mentioned, um, you know, our Canary networks already live. Um, oh, sorry, is it, you know, the, the price in auctions, we already um, secured a slot. Um, so we're gonna go through the um, the onboarding process in throughout like a couple of days, and then this will become live, okay? Um, so our blockchain expects already passed the security um, um, check. So um, by Slowmist, one of the top security firm um, in the market at that stage. Um, so yeah, and then um, after that, we can enable balance. Um, so the first Genesis metaverse will be exist. Um, and, you know, we, we increase mentally, um, create, release more and more features, um, you know, along the way. All right. So, um, yeah, so we enable governance, remove the pseudo keys, and finally, we become fully centralized. Okay. So how you can interact with the metaverse network. Um, so the first approach is for the high level developer or ecosystem projects, you can work with our Metaverse SDK. Um, so we build our SDK to extremely um, easy for developers to start interacting with. Um, it's just only a few layer of code that you can just bring um, connecting into our Metaverse blockchain and then you can interact with that. Um, so yeah, and if you are DApps developers, and um, so we create like the EVN compatible, um, you know, tool. So that's just allow um, all the existing DApps. You can reuse um, all of the tool that on Ethereum's like Hot Hat, um, MetaMask, or Remix, you know, to build a project. So yeah, and you know, for the general user. Um, you know, you can interact with the metaverse through BitCountry, which is like application frameworks and UI. There's no code, just bring your own imagination. All right. Um, so later on, you know, we can show you how easy it is um, that you can create the, um, you know, the whole metaverse, how you can create, um, how you can interact with a metaverse blockchain without any single line of code. Okay. So now, yeah, I guess let's just um, quickly jump into, um, you know, two or three minutes demo of what metaverse can do um, inside a bit country. Okay, so um, stay tuned. Let me just resize here. All right, so what you're seeing at the moment is the, um, you know, like our development version. So um, so we haven't released anything yet. We're just giving some like internal invitation to some of the team members that they can, um, you know, access and to do some more testing. Okay, so, um, you know, a lot of users can just quickly, um, you know, connect into their pocket or extension wallets that they can, um, you know, just simply slide the transactions. Um, let me just slide transaction here. And then um, I think just that's right. All right, so then you can just go directly into the Metaverse dashboard. Um, so in front of you that you can see, um, you know, your wallets that are clients. Um, so you see the noon balance or the near balance, um, you know, um, depends on which network that you connect to. Um, you can see BIT balance. So which is like um, the in-game currencies that, um, you know, Ray just mentioned in initially. Um, at the moment, we connect directly into our development node. Um, so that's as we got around 774,000 um, blocks has been produced. And, you know, this is all the transactions on the blockchains that we recently created. Um, so um, you will see your mining bit mining power, BIT mining power. So, um, so the more mining power you got, you will see the BIT mining rate per hours. Okay. Um, so let me just show you the refer things of how you can create the metaverse um, within any single line of code. You can realize, you can see, um, you know, how you can create your own world. You can, Meaning your own source of tokens, um, you can bring your own assets um, to the metaverse network through just simply the UI. Okay, so um, here's a lot of screens of how you can create a metaverse. Um, let me just quickly put um, the name of your metaverse. Um, you know, I'm just call like MetaCorder Stripe. Um, you know, if everything's that, um, so I can call maybe um, uh, Kingdom. All right, so. Um, so this is where the community that they can share the code, they can NFT noise, um, you know, their speeds of course, and they can share the great moments or do the BIT mining together. All right. Um, it's just for the demo purpose. Um, they can choose whatever the themes that I want to, um, to create for the my metaverse. Um, maybe I can choose space. Um, 
So now I just need to size and confirm the transactions. Um, so inside a Bokodo extension. So when it's size the transactions, um, so it's going to be locked into the blockchain. So this means when you start creating the metaverse, your assets are already perpetualized on the blockchain. All right. Um, and here's the steps that you can establish your own economy. Um, it really depends on the features we're going to enable from day one. Um, but if you know, you can skip the step or you can mint the NFT, um, sorry, you can mint your own source of token for your metaverse. So, um, you know, by default, this is going to use NUMS or NIR as the default currency for your metaverse, um, unless that you can pass the governance um, to accept your source of tokens. Okay. Uh, but for the development purpose, it's show everything. Um, this I'm just creating like it's the metaverse. Um, so meta, um, the meta quarter coins. Um, sorry, just called tokens. Um, NTC. Um, so you can set your total supply. Um, you know, let's at the moment I'm set like a total supply of hundred thousand. Um, initial supply to a dex pool. So which is like a fully decentralized um, you know, version of um, liquidity. Okay. Um, so when you create a total supply, ten percent of that gonna go directly into the pool that people can swap. They can um, you know, provide liquidity. You can bootstrap your liquidity with them. Okay. Um. So yeah, and then you can choose to back the number of NUM um, for that 20% of total supply. So let's say I back with 20 NUM. Um, let me just confirm and try, you know, start a transaction. So before I start a transaction, I can see, um, you know, all the detail of how many NUMs that I need to create. So it really depends on how many NUM that you back for your total supply. Um, you can see the similar change rate over here. Um, you know, later on, we can support USDT. Um, so now you can just um, need to side transactions to complete um, everything. Okay. So um, yeah, I think for the blockchain, we're trying to bootstrap everything, but normally it's going to take around like six seconds to the whole blockchain, um, you know, like finalize. Okay. So now since everything is all fully finalized, um, and then we can just go directly into our metaverse. All right. So um, if you can see, Yes, is your empty metaverse you need to have like the raw land block um, to start creating one um, to start, you know, adding, um, you know, like you can start building inside your metaverse. Okay, so um, at the moment, um, so inside my wallet, um, I got some of the raw land blocks. Um, so which is that the, um, you know, that's contained like 100 land units that can use to deploy for my own metaverse. Okay, so um, Let's see if I can go back into my um, the maps over here. So let's say if I choose this location, I can deploy my raw land blocks into the metaverse. Okay, so you can choose whatever the color um, or the facts and stuff like that you want to present for your land block. Okay, so um, maybe I'm just using this. Um, I was a big fan of blockchain, so I'm just using blockchain um, district. Okay, let's just name my district um, at, the, um, at the BLT. All right, so we decide to confirm the transactions. Um, you know, like you can see your very first um, land losses appear on inside your metaverse. Okay, so that is now this is the complete process of creating your own metaverse. All right, so I'm not going to entering the dimensions. I want to leave a bit of surprise um, to everyone that um, you know. We just leave that for our CTO metaverse. Gonna show you what it's look like. All right, so yeah, I guess that's um, just show you. The important that how easy it is that you can create the metaverse. Um, you can also create an NFT. Um, so here's is some of the example of the NFT that I created. Um, so that, you know, like you can mince the whole NFT here. Um, you know, it's, it's not only mint single NFT, but it can do like a batch minting. Um, you can mince like 500 NFT at a time. Um, you know, you know, you can also. Um, so we also support multi type. Um, NFT, you can, this can be video, um, video clips, um, is it image, 3D models, um, is music, whatever you think is will become the assets, all right? So yeah, I guess that, um, you know, i just quickly show you what it's looked like on a staking um, page, okay? So like for example, at the moment, I got a few land um, estate inside my wallet. Um, you know, I can stack my land to earn BAT. Um, so if you can see like the, the estimate um, return per year, um, so you can see like amount that I stake um, and the amounts that I rewards in PIT, okay? Um, so in the last two um, estates, I'm not 
um, I haven't staked yet, but if you know, I can stake that um, or I can calculate the reward. So this is the part of that how you can um, you know, see that you can allow people to stake your land to earn the BAT. Um, so we also build our DEX. Um, if you already see, um, you know, builder can select either the BAT, which is that the, um, you know, the in-game currency that they can trade with Noom, um, or whatever, um, you know, like the more, um, the sort of tokens that you mint us and stuff like that. All right. So, yeah, I guess that's going to be more I want to show, um, but for the time limited, um, I just want to, um, you know, stop it here. And then, um, you know, when it's available, I can share that um, a little bit more um, with everyone. So, yeah, maybe I will um, hand that back to you, Yadi. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. That was amazing. <laughs> Um, and yeah, just I think judging by the chat, there's um, a lot of excitement about it. And we are now going to um, hand over to Shannon, so CTO of gaming, to show everyone how it's possible to build in the metaverse without any technical skills whatsoever. So over to you, Shannon. All right, cool. Thanks, Agati. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining in. Great to see you all. So yeah, let's start looking a little bit more at the platform. Um, thanks, Justin and Ray and everyone else uh, for your role, of course, in uh, demoing of the product at the moment and the development such as well. Um, but yeah, let me have a quick look about getting my screen shared for you all. Just a moment. OK, so there we go. Cool. You should be looking at my screen now. If not, you can let me know. Um, but otherwise, yeah. So you already saw part of this um, when Justin was going through it in terms of showing how you can create a metaverse and things like that. So now I'm going to look at a few other parts uh, to show you a little bit more inside of the, the metaverse or the 3D aspect um, when you get into it. Uh, but first of all, let's have a quick look at Continuum Map. So this is, of course, the development environment. This is an example of uh, the continuum or this global map where you can put your metaverse. Um, and like Justin shared, there's the, the neighborhood protocol. That one will be uh, relevant to the Polkadot network. And there you have this process of uh, auctioning for a spot to be able to put yourself in there, potentially picking next to a person um, that has maybe a great metaverse, that has a great community and stuff like that. And you can kind of see that there's all these uh, different sizes and such. So if you happen to have more land blocks and stuff like that, it is obvious. Um, and it is something that you can kind of see uh, to differentiate between uh, the power and the community behind a metaverse. So let's head over to... Um, the global marketplace, maybe just to share a little bit about that. Um, I know that Daniel will be spending a little bit more time to show you that process. Uh, the marketplace, of course, is a place where you can check out different NFTs and things like that that are being listed or for sale. So that would be covering things like the actual uh, metaverses themselves. It could be NFTs, uh, avatars, wearables, art pieces, uh, different assets you can put into the world and things like that. Again, um, Daniel will go into a little bit more about that. Of course, there is also the network governance uh, process, which I believe another one of the team will be sharing uh, a bit further uh, in terms of more detail later on. But let's head on over into our um, first uh, metaverse. So with the metaverse, as you kind of already saw a bit, um, you can put in different uh, images and such uh, when it comes to the land block. So you can customize how it looks. It is an opportunity where potentially you do sponsorship or maybe you do advertising or whatever the case may be. That would be something that would be up to your decision uh, for your metaverse. You can decide how you want to do that process, but it is available to you. You can kind of customize how it looks. Um, I can also add and share that when it comes to this map, uh, which I will say is uh, designed by a team, uh, mainly with Daniel's work and stuff like that. So it's really awesome to see his work. And you can actually embed this map inside of your blog or inside of your map or something like that. Uh, app inside of your blog or inside of your website and that would be an opportunity for you to be able to show uh, your metaverse wherever you want it essentially and people can check out the, the the map that you've designed in terms of how it looks and such um but yeah let me just quickly swap over to the video mode so this looks a little bit better so we'll optimize it for video this time 
and jump straight back into the same one. So again, you should all be looking at my screen. We'll give it just a little bit of time for the streaming to pick up. So once you have arrived at your uh, map for your metaverse, you're able to grab this little person and drag and drop them over into the world and let it go. When this happens, uh, the world will start to load up. Um, it needs to, of course, get some basic details. You can see the loading screen um, that we showed on the uh, CrowdLoan page and things like this as well, uh, pre-whitelist page. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Yeah, so you can see the loading screen again. Uh, one of the big design goals, as hopefully you've already heard, is for us to make sure that the whole world loads very quickly. Uh, we do have a requirement, essentially, uh, that we've put in place that we need to aim to keep the world loading in less than three seconds. So it loaded pretty quick just now. Uh, my computer does have some other things running in the background, uh, Zoom, of course, streaming and such. And yeah, we're into the world. So we can see, first of all, that it loads right in your browser. Uh, we've got um, some text and stuff from my testing uh, yesterday with uh, the text tool and stuff like that. But let me kind of go through the process. So just now we've entered into uh, the world um, in a kind of view uh, mode. In the future, you will be able to, for example, over on this uh, left-hand side, uh, at least that's the idea at this stage, we will have a menu item for picking missions and game modes and things like that. In which case, when you enter into the world, you'd be entering for a specific purpose and a specific uh, goal for you to do when you got into it. Um, in the future, uh, there is also, of course, uh, things on the roadmap to support more devices and such. We want to make sure that it is accessible. So we started with this web version first. It's something that you can access on your mobile. It's something you can access on your computer and things like that. And it doesn't necessarily take too much in terms of uh, performance from the computer. At the moment, I am using an Intel Nook. It is just integrated graphics. And we can see that it actually runs pretty well. So that's something to, to keep in mind. Uh, we are looking further along the roadmap to bring things like an Unreal Engine version. Uh, potentially looking at other things as well. It is later on the roadmap as well that we want to look at a VR uh, process as well. But yeah, let's uh, focus a little bit more in terms of what you can do inside of your metaverse. So your avatar is customizable. There is a avatar customizer. At this stage, um, it is being worked on, and it's not really in a state to, to demonstrate too much. Uh, but it is a one where you can select your avatar. You can potentially put different uh, cosmetics and things like that on. Um, and yeah, that's something to mention there. So you can customize how you look in the world. You can do things like when you enter it, you could change the size and such. But still, anyway. Now that we're here, we see that we have this voxel-based world. We're able to very simply uh, remove and place items. We can open up a menu where we can see a selection of different blocks. These are something that you can configure as a Metaverse owner. You can create your own blocks if you wanted to and stick your face on it and just paste it around the world. That's completely up to you. When it comes to modifying or changing the world, that's where bits will come into play again. When you are placing blocks or changing the world, there is a cost in terms of resources, a cost in terms of performance for users. So when you place your blocks, it will be spending your bits that you earn by staking your land, by, <clears throat> sorry, by mining and things like that. And that's something I'll share a little bit more about a bit later on. Uh, we can also have a look at objects and such. Um, I think I just saw my screen stop sharing for a moment. So hopefully you can still see fine. Um, you can put your NFTs here on this particular account. I don't have any NFTs. We can also do props and things like that. These are essentially 3D models and assets that you're putting into the world that don't necessarily have to be NFTs or anything like that. It's a pretty straightforward process to do. Um, so we can uh, select one of these. Uh, it seems like my computer is having a hissy fit with Zoom streaming. Um, once we have a little bit more time on my CPU to do stuff, or maybe I need to start closing things in the background. Hopefully, you can still see things all right. Uh, it's just being a little bit slow with the Zoom streaming and such. 
So we can pick one of these uh, assets that we've already created in the past, or we can just create a new one. Normally, you would use a model file such as GLB. Uh, let me just, for example, uh, pick a new asset. So I do my asset. So this would be creating a brand new thing that I can put into the world. It's pretty straightforward. We pick our file, we give it a name, then we just go through and do the process of uh, creating it. So it's just creating a new one. Um, then uh, we'll be in a position to be able to place it into the world. Again, my computer is really not happy about doing the streaming. Um, it's pretty uh, simple that once it's in, you can just kind of pick it, let it load and place it into the world. Here's this new asset I've just made. Let's just pick this one because I know it's a little bit lighter. So we do that. We can see that it's in the world now. We're able to rotate it. We can scale it larger or smaller. Once we're happy with the position, we can right click and the asset is now in the world. Again, this is something that you would spend a bit based on the complexity of your 3D asset that you're placing. If it has a very high poly count, if it has a very expensive uh, size or does things like that, you'll need to spend more bit to cover that. So we can see it's pretty straightforward uh, to be able to do that. We can also do media in terms of videos and images and things like that. Um, so that's one of those things that you can do as well if you want to be able to put different images and stuff into the world. So if we can jump over to the tools section in a bit, um, that's where we'll be able to see some of the other tools that are available inside of the metaverse, uh, where we can do things like customize uh, your environments for your metaverse, remove, tool, uh, remove assets and things like that as well. And we also have a typewriter. So for example, if you wanted to be able to put your own text into the world, oops, not that button, go here, set it to red, 40, we can say the classic hello world. And then we can also just place that into the world, but we won't do that in this case. If we head over to the environment customizer, this is just a, a simpler uh, version at this stage. We will build it out further so that we can uh, make it easier for you to understand. We can configure our sky. We can configure the ground color. Um, in the past, we had a texture for the ground color. At the stage, we've made it a grid. Again, it will be something that you'll be able to configure. You can choose to use a texture or an image if you want for your ground. So if we make it green now, we can see that it updated. And yeah, so that shows you a little bit about uh, the process here. Uh, we can see, for example, that we've put in a large uh, stadium or something here. We can see that we have a large animated um, uh, a basketball trophy. Again, that's all using that same process I shared just before in terms of placing this model here. So yeah, uh, you have quite a lot of control in terms of how you do it. It's all pretty straightforward in terms of uh, placing into the world. You don't need to have any technical skills or anything like that. Um, as long as you know how to, to use your, your mouse and keyboard, um, as long as you know how to, to enter into the world, then you're going to be in a pretty good position to be able to, to customize it, to, to modify it and such. Um, something that I haven't necessarily shared here that's also important to keep in mind is that you can attach behavior to um, assets you've placed into the world. Um, and that would be able to do mini games and things like that for your community as well. So let's head towards the void. The void is an area that is where you haven't put any of your land blocks and it's an area where you will do mining. So if we head through, we see that the look of the world, of course, has changed. We see that we are now um, not able to see quite as far um, and we can also see these glowing blocks here and such. So if I can just jump back into our normal uh, build mode, essentially, we can actually do bit mining. So as we've kind of mentioned earlier about mining, this is the process where you would come into this world and you would start collecting these. So you can kind of see that the allocation that I have down in this bottom right area, which is a function of my mining power and the amount of bits that was uh, minted on the blockchain, that it will start to increment and count up as I collect this. We will have other processes in the world as well for you to be able to, to get bit um, in terms of things that you can do in the void, or maybe you do it inside of uh, the game world itself. 
the bit, as I mentioned, will be what you use to customize your world to change how everything looks and things like that. So yeah, I think that kind of shares a little bit about that part. Um, of course, you can also see in the top right that there is an offline uh, there at the moment. If we were um, next to other players and we swapped to online mode, um, we would see that there were a whole bunch of uh, other players interacting with each other where you can chat when you open up the chat um, and things like that. But let me just quickly swap over to another tab. Uh, you should all be still able to see my screen. We can see now that we are inside of the stadium. Um, we can see that, for example, we have used our uh, image and media to put um, some images around. We can see that the possibilities really that you could do things here. So there could be uh, scripts and different behavior associated here. Um, the team that I'm leading, we are working on an API and framework again um, to allow you to create experiences and such. So yeah, let me just uh, quickly go online. So this is just connecting to our multiplayer server. Um, one of the things that we're also uh, developing um, is multiple different ways to go online. So we have a multiplayer server where you can connect into, and that would be much more of a kind of centralized approach. It's good for larger events and things. There is also kind of more of a peer-to-peer -peer mode as well, which will continue to work um, even uh, in a situation where uh, for some reason, you can't connect to our servers, they're down, updates, whatever, you'll still always be able to connect with your friends using that kind of peer-to-peer -peer method. I believe that this tab has had a little bit of a issue. So let me jump back to this one. Or the multiplayer server has decided to die right at this very moment. Um, but yeah, when you connect into it, it's something that you can see. You've seen some of our demos in the past um, with the multiplayer server connection. Um, it's something that maybe we can share off a bit later on. But yeah, uh, mindful of the time, um, let me just stop uh, sharing video mode so that I can show a little bit of the rest of the site. Uh, just a moment. Go back to share again. Take it off video mode. All right, yes. So um, that kind of shows you a little bit about the world. Uh, another area to touch on that Ray briefly showed, there is the feeds for your metaverse as well. That's where your community will be able to, to do posts and things like that. Okay, I think I figured out what happened. My login expired. Um, the feeds is where you'll be able to uh, see posts and things like that. Let me just stop sharing my screen because it's decided to play up a bit. Um, yeah, the feeds is where you'll be able to show your posts and such. Um, it's uh, a place for the community to be able to share events. That's where you could have timeline things happen, like if you walked into the world and um, someone walked into your shop and they met certain criteria, it could automatically record it and post it to your timeline and different things like that. So yeah, I think that gives you a little bit of an idea in terms of uh, what you can do in the world. You can see that's pretty straightforward process. You can just grab those model files that you could get from the marketplace or something like that. You can create your own when you follow the specification. You'll be able to find out more details about that later. Um, but yeah, hopefully you'll have a bit of a better idea now in terms of the metaverse, in terms of the 3D aspect and things like that. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything from my side. So I guess I'll hand it back over um, to you, Gadi. seem to be having a let me try do this Hi, <laughs> cool. thank you so much that was amazing and thanks for giving us a glimpse inside you know the 3d world and i think this, it just gave everyone a clear understanding of how they'll be able to build their own metaverse so thanks for that and we're going to delve a bit deeper now um, and i'll hand you over to daniel who'll share um, some info about the marketplace which um, shannon touched on and subdivisions within your metaverse. So over to um, um, our co-founder, Daniel. Yeah, uh, thank you, Gadi, and the rest of the team. And hey, everyone, um, good to see you all here. And my name is Daniel Choi. So I'm one of the co-founder of the Bikenchi team and also a software developer um, who focusing on the web and also the game development. So um, in today's webinar, so I'm going to showcase two features that we recently built. So just let me share the screen. So I think that you can see the uh, right screen on the side. Okay, so um, there are lots of features that we built 
and built by our team because of the time limitation. So we are not able to show it all. So for example, this is where we can toggle between the dark mode and the light mode. And um, today we will be just using the dark mode for the uh, presentation. And also this is how our Google Marketplace will look like. Sorry, going back to our Marketplace. Just give you a second. Oh, maybe let me share the screen again. Um, yeah, I think um, there is some um, issues with the uh, API at the moment. So um, the network is currently down. Maybe just to give a few more seconds to everything is to uh, spinning up again. Okay, Daniel, I think maybe while you're getting that sorted, um, I'll just remind the, um, everyone watching that um, we will, because I've been seeing some messages about NFTs and so on, we will be sharing the link at the end. Um, and um, just a reminder, what you'll need to do is you'll need to complete the form and submit it to claim your NFT. Any questions about that? And um, yes, and if you have any questions to post it in the Q&A box, please. So thank you so much. Over to you, Daniel. Yeah, thanks. Um, it's come back alive. So, um, okay. So Global Marketplace. So Global Marketplace allow uh, the users to put the NFT such as their shoes, jacket, um, 3D model or sound that you build from uh, any form of NFT to put it here um, for sale across um, different metaverses on the global marketplace. So on the left side, uh, uh, we can see the filter of the marketplace and then uh, we group the filter into those categories for now, such as the listing type, the rarity, um, the keyword and also the collections. So there are different type of the listing on our marketplace, um, such as the on sale, um, on auctions or for rent. Also at different level of the rarity, different collection representing different set of the NFTs. So um, on top of the menu bar, um, we can choose different categories from here. So we've got the avatars, We've got the art, 3D models, music, and et cetera. So um, for instance, um, we are going to have a look at the app there. And also you can use the filter here to choose the epic item or the uh, legendary item or both. So um, in this case, um, I want to select those items. And also this is something that I'm interested in it. So this is the first meta uh, human in the metaverse. And once you open it, so you can see the 3D model on the left and some basic information about the NFT on this page. So um, with the 3D viewer, so you can um, um, rotate the 3D viewer to have a look at the model in different uh, angle. And also you can have a look at the right side to see some more basic information about the um, in, uh, NFT, such as the bidding history from the past and then the NFT supporters who was the supporters uh, for this NFT and also the ownership of this NFT and also some insight of the uh, NFT. Okay. So we can just exit this page and come back to the global marketplace and keep browsing by just clicking the reset filter. So we're going back to the um, home page where it shows all the M uh, NFTs and Thing. Yeah, maybe just because of my network connections problem is quite slow here. So um, yeah, you can just keep scrolling down to find out the best uh, NFT that you're looking for or just uh, using the uh, filtering option on the filter. Okay, 
the next thing, the next big thing that I want to share with you guys is the subdivision tool. Okay, so if we go to the Genesis VC and we go to the subdivision, um, this is the tool that we uh, can subdivide our uh, land block. So in big country, a land block can have the maximum of 100 subdivided land units, and they are all subdividable. Um, once the land block uh, owner di divide the land, each divided land unit will form an estate. So you can divide the land into different estates for different purposes, such as for the lease or for sale. This tool is going to em uh, empower the landowner to subdivide uh, the land for their community. And also it provides a good vision on how you would arrange your estate. So for this example, um, I'm going to select the Daniel's NFT. So this is, uh, as you know, my NFT. And on the left side of this page, this is where you can divide the land unit with a land block by single clicking or by just uh, drag uh, this clip. Okay, and then you can add the new estate. Okay, the reason we can do it because um, each subdivided subdivide land must be next to each other. So this is how we add and form the estate. Um, <clears throat> sorry, as you can see. Okay, and um, on the right side, you can also see the new estate and existing estate. So the existing estate is the group of the estate that you built before. And um, you can also um, deleting or updating the estate using this uh, tab, okay? So um, we couldn't do it for now because we have to finish our previous actions. So once you click the um, create new estate, so the, uh, it will um, trigger those uh, functions and creating the estate in the database. And also um, you can update removing um, all those estate in here, as long as the status of the estate become needed, not pending, okay? So um, this is basically how the subdivision tools work. And um, I think this is quite a simple tool, but with a great purpose. So yes, I think that will be all from uh, for my presentation. So let me pass this back to Gadi. Oh, thanks so much, Daniel. That's awesome. Thanks. And um, now we're going to um, uh, move over to our, our devs and design team. So um, they'll give us an idea of um, what they've been working on and how that will impact the metaverse. So um, let me pass you over to Mike to talk about governance. Everyone, uh, can you hear me? I'm Mike, blockchain developer based in London. Uh, today I'm going to show you our Met, uh, Metaverse governance user interface. So let me share my screen. So hopefully um, you can see it now. Uh, so yeah, this is a, a governance page. And we built this to allow uh, members of a Metaverse to create proposals and to also vote uh, on ongoing uh, referendums. So to create a proposal, we just have to select some action and this action should make some meaningful change to your Metaverse. So I'm just going to select one here. Uh, metaverse, uh, freeze metaverse. So when we can create a proposal, um, a referendum will begin, and this will give you and your members a chance to vote on whether you want this proposal to be enacted on your uh, metaverse or not. So by going to the freeze uh, metaverse uh, referendum, we can see some details here, such as the name and for which uh, country this is, uh, metaverse is. We have a voting time, and we also have options to vote yes or no. So this is all happening on chain. If I vote yes, and this is gonna update. And once this uh, referendum is finished, then the action that we pre-selected before, freeze metaverse will be scheduled to execute on chain in a couple of blocks time. And uh, yeah, all of this would, uh, would, will happen automatically without any, um, any manual intervention. So using this power of on-chain governance, metaverse owners can make meaningful changes and make it a better place for themselves and their users. And that's it from me, uh, CEO on the Metaverse. Hand it back over to you, Gardy. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. I think let's um, move on to Jerry. Jerry, are you there? If you can tell us a bit more about the notifications, monitoring. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me all right? 
Cool, awesome. Uh, my name is Jerian. Uh, I'm a senior software developer. Uh, I work closely with Justin uh, on the blockchain side of things. So before joining Big Country, uh, I was a close cloud solution architect at De Deloitte. Uh, so I'm just gonna, gonna quickly show you uh, what I've been working on recently. So as someone saying that uh, cloud is someone else's computer, so it's really important to have uh, monitoring tools. So um, um, apart from blockchain and um, the metaverse, we got uh, something called indexer. So that's basically will retrieve all the events that are happening on the blockchain and then sync that to our um, gaming side of things. Um, so, uh, for example, uh, we create a metaverse um, that happens on chain. Then we want to send the data back to the uh, to the metaverse. Um, so then we use blockchain as a single source of truth. Um, so this thing is called indexer. Um, basically, that will do those things. And um, so it's important to keep an eye on this, seeing everything is working as expected. Um, as just mentioned, recently we have won the Ecosama uh, auction. And uh, um, I think we're now in the onboarding process. Everything will be live in about five or four days time. Um, so we recently have set up uh, Prometheus and Rafna to uh, monitor the clicker nodes. Um, they'll give us a pretty good idea how this is performing at the moment. Um, or give us the uh, number of RPC connections, the peer node. Um, so based Apart from that, we also um, set up the basic monitoring on the um, on our um, easy uh, virtual machine. Um, as you can see, our CPU is pretty hundred uh, percent. We definitely do spin that up. Um, yeah, so that's all from me. Back to you, Gary. Awesome, thanks, Jerry. I think let's um, hand over to Addy to tell us more about, um, you know, the shaders and show us some of the cool work. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Let me just share my screen real quick. Yeah. So this is an early version of our avatar customizer. Um, it has GPU support for morph maps and things like that. So content creators are going to be able to upload their own avatars and create their own sliders and customizables for people to actually edit. Um, users will be able to use the decal editor to customize their avatar. I'll just go back to that again. Um, so that you can choose or customize what your avatar looks like and put your own logos on things and really make it your own. Um, we are also working on customizable, so wearables like clothing and better avatars, obviously. This is a very old version. We have a hologram shader and a bird that you're going to be able to use in the world. Um, you'll be able to apply that to various other um, buildings and effects and things you place in the world. And finally, this is our loading screen, which is something I made recently. It's very lightweight. It's under 100K, it runs on mobile, um, and it looks great. So you'll probably see this a fair bit every time you log in. Back to you, Addy. Awesome, thanks, Addy. Um, I think it's time to, is Michael, are you there? Can you share some, um, some views with us? Michael, it seems like your sound's playing up at the moment. Uh, yeah, cool. Okay, sweet. Hello. Hi, Michael. Over to you. Hey, guys. Um, so I'm working uh, with Shannon um, as a 3D artist. I'm making models that will work within the engine, and I'll share my screen so I can show you some stuff. Um, Sweet. Um, so this, um, 
yeah, so this is an example of uh, an avatar that players can use um, within the, that they could pick and use within the engine. Um, and the idea behind this one was uh, you could blend between uh, each version. So I'll show you how that uh, might work. So this is it. Um, this is where the rig was built. So that's like an example of it morphing between um, each avatar. Um, so I'll move on to the next one. Uh, so this piece was for a influencer online um, and uh, for Ash uh, Wall Street Bets. This was like the initial idea, um, but I needed to show how it could be used um, within his his metaverse. So I um, separated the bits out and then took this into uh, rendered it. And this is it here. Um, I just built out a wee composition for it, and I'll add the textures on. So this is like, as maybe he had a, a bunch of followers as his army and he could give out um, his mask as an NFT perhaps. And then um, we're also developing avatars um, for a Metasol uh, project. And this could be, um, possibly represent who you are online as like your ultra personality. So this is obviously a higher um, fidelity than what it would exist as on in the online engine. Um, but yeah, that's um, pretty much all from me. So I'll hand it over to someone else. Thanks, Michael. I'd love for you to create my avatar. <laughs> <laughs> the metaverse, amazing, amazing work. Um, and um, Let's move on to Logan, who will tell us a bit more about MetaSoul. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks, Scotty. Uh, hi, guys. Um, very glad to see you all here. I'm the designer in the Big Country team. Uh, my name is Logan, who are working very closely with developers and our marketing team behind the scene. I've involved this uh, amazing project since very first beginning. Uh, my job is to uh, visualize any thoughts or ideas in the heads from uh, our teammates. And I believe you guys already see my work from websites, uh, uh, products, or NFTs, or all the way to variety posters and banners on social media. And looking back on wave uh, experience, uh, we were, uh, we have uh, tens of thousand ideas came up in where I meant, and we had to give up uh, some of, uh, really good ones and kept uh, polishing the best one. Um, design always go first here. The biggest challenge here uh, was creating something new that never existed before, uh, such as the concept of a whole new uh, virtual world or uh, metaverse and uh, what people are going to look like in that world. So maybe uh, let me share my screen. Just a second. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Cool. Um, so this is the NFT I've created before, and uh, some of you guys already knew about it. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is the uh, our next uh, project matter. So, and we guarantee you guys, so we're gonna, uh, not gonna extract uh, your souls from you guys. <laughs> uh, it's act actually uh, something like in this uh, parallel virtual world, you, uh, you're gonna have a second or the third identity uh, in, in that world. You could be anything and uh, you could be a virtual human and uh, you could be a robot and you maybe you can be uh, uh, animals, any object that can carry consciousness and uh, they were driven by a powerful uh, AI. Uh, you're gonna uh, learn something uh, uh, new behaviors. Uh, maybe yeah, in the future you're gonna have your own 
personality. Yeah. So maybe um, yeah, at the last, that's what I'm, I'm currently doing. Yeah. Back to you, Charlie. Awesome. Thanks, Logan. Um, and that wraps up our, um, our intro from the team. Um, we are now going to open um, up the questions. I see there are quite a few in here. So um, what I'll do is I'll just um, open up here and let's see. Um, I'll just choose some random, random ones. There's so many here. Um, Good one here from Sue Ern Oi. Is the NFT marketplace traded in new? Yeah, well, I can do you want to answer that? Or... Thanks, okay. Justin. Yeah. So yeah, well, thanks for thanks for the questions. Yeah, for the for the NFT marketplace, um, at, at this stage, um, you know, we create like two levels of the marketplace that the global marketplace and the local marketplace, which is like your local metaverse marketplace. So under the global marketplace that you can trade with the native um, tokens that on the metaverse network is could be um, you know on the our canary is this new and is on our mainnet is it new um, and on the local metaverse um, that's as you can trade that within your own um, local community um, so that's it can be on your own source of token if you can get accepted from the um, for the governance all right so I hope that answer your question awesome thank you and um Question from Tommy Astikainen. Can dozens, hundreds, thousands of users come together, pool their resources and build a metaverse together? Good question, Tommy. Who would like to answer that one? Uh, I'd be interested to jump in with that one. Um, yeah, I, I definitely see that as a possibility. Um, in terms of, part of it is answer for, for Justin, but in terms of the creating a metaverse, pulling together um, to be able to build it out as, I guess, a collaborative or something like that is something that we want to support. Um, in terms of the part that my team focuses on, the metaverse building, we already have on the roadmap to allow for you to share building rights on your land inside your land block, inside your metaverse. So in that case, you could share it with your community, your kind of collaborative group, and all build it out together. Um, that would be a process that would be supported. You're also able to use it for things like maybe you are paying for services of someone else to build your world. Maybe you don't have time to build it yourself. So we definitely think that there will be things like uh, almost like um, accredited builders, you could say, that they could come into the world, you pay them, they, they build it out for you. Um, so yeah, I guess since it's kind of like a two-part thing, I guess Justin on the, on kind of the, the blockchain side in terms of allowing people to collaboratively build out or own it, I'll, I'll pass it to you. Sure, thanks, Shannon. Yeah, so um, with our current benchmark, um, so you know within the blocks that we can have at least around like five to one hundred, um, sorry, from five hundred to around sort of a thousand metaverses, um, they can create within one block, which is like around like six seconds. Um, so of course, like the team, we can um, you know create some more um, and some more scalability in, into that. Um, it's really depends on how we can optimize the block productions and things like that on the blockchain. Um, but yeah, I think at this stage, um, you know, users that can create up to 1,000, um, you know, metaverses um, in a single block um, based on our current benchmark. Um, of course, you know, um, in the future, we can optimize a bit more, um, you know, to create like 10,000 metaverses um, within six seconds. All right. So, um, yeah, I mean, when we get into those points, I think that is um, our blockchain should be, um, you know, very scalable for that. So in terms of, um, you know, interactions between like um, train for the NFTs and stuff like that, um, you know, like train for the assets. I think at this stage, we don't have any issue. Um, you know, if 10,000, um, you know, like um, train for um, NFTs or the assets, um, they created at the time. Um, so, you know, like the in, in would be enough number of transactions will be fit into one block. So otherwise, this will be move over into the next block. Um, so all the transactions would be um, executed. All right, so I um, hope that answers your question. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, Justin. Wow. Um, okay, we've got a few here. Um, I'll go over to a question. I can't pronounce the name, but how do you consider your place comparatively with close competitors to Central Land and Sandbox? 
So uh, I'll go for this question, Gary. Uh, thanks, everyone. Amazing presentation. Um, that's great to show you know, what we've been doing and also get yourself introduced to our community. So today we have a limited amount of time. Uh, we're bringing more sessions, demo days with NFTs available in the near future. So you get to see each of us and including our ambassadors, head ambassadors, those top uh, helpers in the Telegram, Discord, um, you know, our team know about you. You know, we, we see some people like a Pondering, uh, Leo, Dimitri, uh, those wonderful uh, people helping us. So we'll introduce them in the future. Yeah. So uh, my vision is there are there will be thousands of different metaverses, just like there will be hundreds of different sci-fi movies and narratives, right? And uh, the point of difference of ours is that we're building blockchain as well as the UI. So Metaverse Network is a, a you can think as a, like a Metaverse version of Ethereum, which is a big country is like a, a D app that you can use in the browser. In the future, you can use it in the Unreal Engine desktop and also in the VR. I also some question uh, come up from the VR. Um, one major point of difference is you can launch your own Metaverse for your people, for your community, right? Um, you can choose your own sky. We can give you the complete freedom to build up the dream world, a home for your assets, for your legacy, for your community. Whereas others, they're building a monolithic world that you can't really influence too much. If you ask yourself a question, if you go to some platform, I want the sky to be look like a Mars today. Can that be? Whereas it's possible in big country because you and your landowners, stakeholders will, will govern your metaverse, right? Uh, second thing is that, you know, uh, we are decentralized and it's an open platform. So your metaverse or all the entire metaverse uh, network will last, especially after, you know, we decentralized uh, 100%, will last as long as Bitcoin, which in turn, I believe that will be everlasting uh, for human civilization uh, lifespan. And thirdly, um, come down to the narrative. We're on Polkadot. We're the first one. And, you know, I assume to be the largest one will be uh, uh, inside the Polkadot ecosystem. We can be a very interesting narrative to bring the pioneers from Kusama to the continuum on Polkadot through incentivized great immigration. You know, those selected ones through governors will come up to us with us to continue to build a, a more wonderful land. While Kusama room is limited, give more people a chance to uh, use your land or buy your land to follow the same journey. So we like to see that as a trilogy. Our team is based in New Zealand. New Zealand brought you the Lord of Ring films, the avatars, those trilogy films. We also inspired that by that kind of uh, storylines. So Pioneer has been our first episode continue second. And the third part of the trilogy is more exciting, will be realized after five years. And the idea is uh, concrete and solid. The concept is, I'll tell you later, okay? So we, I think we got enough story to overwhelm you. And again, I want to highlight our culture is about a journey together. And it's just like the journey, how our team grow from 10 years ago to this point, how those students grow from employees to co-founders to be CEOs. We want to see the near holders, the users, our early adopters with part of the same journey. That's the culture and, and the value we entertain and we invest in. So I think that says enough, but a lot more. But uh, overall, again, big country and the metaverse shows that our understanding of the world, people, origin and the future. It's our own understanding, which is a unique, uh, you know, for this particular narrative. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ray. Um, let's see here. We've got, um, what's that, Ruslan Rudyashko. Will there be some kind of land sale? To you, Ray. In terms of land sale, uh, since everyone is here and so excited, you know, again, we will honor the contributors in Kusama, the qualified ones. 
uh, our team try to do our best to give everybody a chance or majority 90% uh, of participants a chance. Of course, we have upcoming events, which is Medicine, uh, sorry, Med Odyssey token event uh, coming up in about six days from today, right? Uh, we'll onboard more users. Again, uh, you know, our team have a different culture and a unique value proposition. Uh, we will play things differently. We look after the true users uh, who potentially want to launch a metaverse or be part of the metaverse in the future. So I can't really sell too much about our plan. Things will become clearer before Christmas or after the 3rd of December. Again, you know, if you see, understand our value and understand, you know, our, our system and the platform as a vision, and you should, if not, do your own research. And uh, I hope you feel you guys will be in the same hands. And then just as all of my students in the past, the co-founding teams and employees. In terms of public sale, uh, we use distribution first and we'll put on the public sale land on hold uh, because you know, we want to create a, a, a environment that allow people to focus on the build rather than just uh, speculating on the prices. So the land distributed is only for your own metaverse. You can subdivide further and sell it to other people who love your community or transfer to your friends. Uh, in terms of platform sale, we need to uh, look and uh, pause for a while so that people can focus on the development side, uh, building a variety of cultures and metaverse on the continue and allow people to come and add value to your community. So we call it the grow to earn. Uh, but uh, we do have a private sale uh, with the big partners. So far we sold um, the private land sale, uh, potentially good for the community because they will bring over hundred million users uh, if all of their fans board. So we can really review their name. Uh, that will be reviewed in the near future after we go live. Thanks, Ray. I think you answered quite a few questions with that answer. So um, that's fantastic. Um, next question. Um, where did I see this? Um, what kind of games do you plan to integrate into BitCountry from Vova Gavrish? That's a great question. Shannon, do you want yep. to answer? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Cardi. Um, yeah, so in terms of games and things like that, in terms of integrating, there is the potential support if they follow standard NFTs and things like that, that those NFTs could be brought over into BitCountry to be viewed and things. In terms of creating your own experiences, I'll answer this kind of multiple ways, depending on how you ask the question exactly. In terms of creating your own experiences, there will be a API and framework available developed by my team where you will be able to create these missions or game modes. So. For example, one of the proof of concept ones, which I didn't have a chance to share um, here um, that we finished a few months ago was kind of something in between Snake and like a, a bullet hell game <laughs> where you have to try and dodge everything. So that was one of the ones that we had done. Um, Addy had also uh, developed a proof of concept for the, the game framework as well. And that one was like a capture the flag, but in this case called capture the kitten. Um, so that's where you would run around, you could shoot lasers at each other. Um, and again, it's something that we didn't really have a chance to share here. So with the framework, uh, you will be able to do quite a lot of different things in the world. I see that you could create a lot of different experiences. So. Hopefully that kind of uh, answers your question. Before you go anyway, Shannon, one more for you. Um, okay. <laughs> from Eldad Kanawa. Um, hello, do we need some special glasses to access the metaverse? Okay, yep. Um, so no, not at this stage. Um, to access the platform, as long as you have an internet connection and I guess a computer that isn't too old. Um, I, in that regard, I answered a question just before. The minimum specs for getting into the world, those will be uh, detailed more later. 
one of the big and important goals is to make sure it's accessible by as many people as possible. Um, I saw some people had uh, mentioned about graphics and things like that. Um, it is something that we're still continuing to work on. Um, if you didn't happen to see my tweet, um, you could see that we were making improvements to the PBR rendering pipeline. Um, Addy is also working on some more uh, shaders and things like that as well to make the world cooler. It is still our primary goal for this version to make it accessible. So we will see about how we can push the graphics while making it easy. Um, as we said, with a roadmap with Unreal Engine version or whatever the case may be in the future, um, that's where we'll definitely be able to push uh, the, the quality or the fidelity of the graphics further. Hopefully that answers your question. Yes, it does. I think I'll answer it perfectly. Thank you so much, Shannon. Um, now I'm keeping an eye on the time and I think we'll have to just wrap it up with a few more questions. Um, um, let's see here. I think some of these we've already touched on. Okay, um, I've got a question here from Ganesan Srinivasan. Are all the artifacts, land, avatar, all stored in blockchain too? Yeah, so in your metaverse, every single pixel is an asset. Uh, because when you deploy a building or building something or land that will burn the BIT, which you earn through staking reward or completing tasks by growing the community to earn. Uh, so there's a two part of components. For the ledger, there'll be your own blockchain. For other media files, it will be stored on our Metaverse storage platform, which is a decentralized storage using IPFS protocol. So that again will be incentivized for uh, IPFS node holders who are storing civilization files, media files, and histories, legacies, and they're getting paid through a uh, BIT token. Thanks, Ray. Um, I'll, I'll just take two more questions. Um, I think some of these questions, like I said, we've already covered. Um, if, if your question is not answered, I'd, we'd love to get to all of them, but please do your research and check us out on Medium, follow our Telegram and Twitter, Facebook, just um, check all our channels and, um, you know, you can always get in touch with the team there, but I'll take two more questions. Um, okay. <laughs> so, um, very good question. Abdul Majed Mohammed, how do you think the metaverse will transform into the upcoming five years and what role will BitCountry be playing in this sector? Great question, Abdul. Thanks. Who would like to yeah, answer, right? That's a, that's a good question, Abdul. Thanks for asking. Our role is to, uh, to, to tell the stories, to make those um, uh, products supporting the stories that we believed in, uh, which is, again, our understanding of origin and the world people and the future. Uh, we see metaverse is the new internet, is the new medium for people to interact and work and live. Um, especially, you know, there'll be many jobs to be created. We published a thesis as about bringing uh, 100,000 jobs uh, opportunities, especially through the metaverse owners, and then let the opportunity to be accessed through those unprivileged regions, but with the internet. Uh, given the Starlink and the modern technology, I think people in Africa or part of uh, Asia or, you know, the Latin area, they all have access to internet. That means they will have a job opportunity to serve the wider community to meet our people's demand. Again, we'd like to see a journey together, a journey from unknown to uh, familiar, to understanding, to share the same vision. At the same time, along the ways, we, you know, there'll be opportunity to be created. Uh, that's kind of our plan. Our role is that we want to create a new trend. I personally want to see uh, one particular metaverse project will be in the top five list of CMC. Uh, I believe I can see that one day because traditional layer one protocol, they don't have this uh, community viral effect. Whereas a metaverse such as a big country, you know, one metaverse will bring literally from, you know, at least the two people to millions of people and they will bring more people in. So this viral effect is very powerful, especially in a social community, uh, especially in the context of the metaverse development. Uh, we, we like to see that and then hopefully We'll be part of that and um, we'll work hard on it. Thank you so much, Ray. Last question um, from Amoyi Udehi. Thank you for showing us what you've been working on. 
understand that there are options to design in, in metaverse NFTs and a partnership with RMRK, but I was wondering if there was a way to bridge other blockchain NFTs, particularly the popular ones like the punks. Yes. Um, well, I can, I can answer that question. So, um, yeah, I think as I already mentioned before, um, on the metaverse networks, I was, um, our goal is to become like um, the network with multi-chain. So your assets going to be, um, you know, bridging across all the different blockchain. It's not only with thing the Bokoro ecosystem with things in the parachain, but it's also um, outside of the system as well. Like for example, if you create an NFT um, on Ethereum so that you can bring that over into um, the Metaverse networks and you can display that in BitCountry. Um, or if you can, if you create like a great NFT, um, create a great vibe inside of BitCountry, um, you can bridge that over to the um, Ethereum that you can see, um, you can sell that on a different marketplace and stuff like that. So inter interoperability is our goal, um, you know, to create the assets that can freely transfer, um, they can freely flow from one blockchain to the other. Um, so, I, you know, I think it's to the point that um, at the moment we already built our bridge. Um, so that's is you can bring the BitCountry um, or the Metaverse asset um, to the EVM, um, you know, compatible um, blockchain, which is that uh, not only Ethereum, but also with Heco, Binance, um, you know, and so all other blockchains that um, support EVM as well. So, yeah, I think um, I hope that answer the question. Thanks, Justin. That's great. Um, so that wraps it up for today. Um, I just want to thank you so much for spending the morning with us or wherever you are in the world. It was so great to connect with you and to introduce you to the team, show you what we've been working on. Um, let's keep the connection going. Join us in our um, social media channels, Discord, Telegram, um, you know, those are the, and Twitter, and um, those are the key ones. I have dropped the link, the very special app NFT link. So please click on the link. I'll send it again. If you've missed it, click on the link, fill in the form and claim your special NFT. Shows you were here at this very special moment in time um, and hopefully you can claim some utilities in the future. Um, so that's it from me and the team. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Kia ora. Till next time. Yeah, I just got a few words for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks team for the great presentation and uh, especially we need to get up this early. Really appreciate that. And uh, we want to give great more chance to meet the community, understand, you know, where the, you know, people with a real, you know, you know flesh and blood and, and the hearts in here. And also to the wider community, uh, um, either you are a contributors or followers, you are treated the same. Uh, we want to convey a, a, a message to everyone from our city investors to our uh, contributors or investors in the future. Uh, we want to thank you. Thank you for believing in our vision and uh, our team is a long-term uh, team. Uh, we have a, you know, uh, where's the business on our group? We have a very experienced team culture uh, and a business mindset here, especially to the cd investors. At the time, we only have a paper without any code. They add a tremendous amount of value. They brought a tremendous amount of connection for us and literally work us for free for the last 12 months. And then each of them, they bring us connections, uh, uh, you know, land, uh, land partnerships, social media influencers, uh, and also advisors. We thank them very much for being part of the journey at the very beginning when we were nobody. But uh, in the future, I mean, the, the good news is it's still very early, all right? Uh, Metaverse is at the uh, um, very beginning of the new era. Uh, we are very excited. I'm personally very excited uh, to create a new trend. Uh, my personality is, um, you know, I, I'm driven for a purpose and uh, I want to, the rest of the you know, life, the time of my life to create something that's meaningful and then make an impact, you know, to the people who have the right attitude, are keen to learn and want to put the efforts in to, uh, to grow uh, for themselves and, and their families. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a beautiful day. And uh, I know somewhere is very late. Uh, have a good sleep. And then, yeah, see you around. Join our Discord. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Great questions. See you all next time. See you, everyone. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.